Hello and welcome to Retrobot, the YouTube channel where we feed a friendly space robot a diet of pure nostalgia. I'm Clay and today we are talking about a figure that I just picked up. Okay, actually I picked it up about a week ago and I've been doing a lot of videos and so I'm finally getting to open him up. I haven't even opened him up. So we're going to do an unboxing and a review of Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Vertebrake. There he is. And let's just jump right in here. So here is the packaging. And uh, as is the case with pretty much all of the War for Cybertron Kingdom packaging, the artwork is gorgeous. It really does look fantastic. I like the logo. I like the typography. I love the illustration. You know, that, that image right there of Vertebrake, let me get it in focus here. It, it really is just fantastic. Fantastic. And I'm a big fan of these fossilizer guys. I don't actually know if he's a fossilizer or if he's just a guy whose alt mode is a dinosaur skeleton. But whatever the case, whoever decided to make Transformers that turn into skeletons, that that is just about the best idea in the universe. Um, yeah. Skeleton Transformers, Zombie Transformers, I, 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 I'm, I'm right there. And especially Dinosaur Skeletons, I mean, this stuff writes itself. So, bravo Takara, bravo Hasbro, who, whoever it was that came up with that idea, uh, I, I, I think that a raise is in order. So we've got Vertebrake here, and uh, and he's a smaller guy. I believe that he would be core class, and I haven't really, yeah, yeah, you can even see here, uh, core class, and uh, honestly, I haven't been that excited about the core class. Uh, I got the uh, the Optimus Prime in the core class, and it was it was decent. It's not a bad Optimus Prime, but it's just little. I guess uh, Core Class is great to use in conjunction with some of the Titan Class figures that are supposed to be ridiculously sized, and then you've got a Core Class character that can be picked up and thrown around and stuff like that. So, uh, nonetheless, this is Vertebrake, and here you can see the packaging on the back. They've got... Uh, They've got him over top of some uh, some ancient runes here or whatever. Uh, you know, there, I, there's obviously some kind of a spell going on, uh, but uh, but he's standing in his his magic uh, what whatever uh, his his runes or whatever. Um, I think that as long as he's standing in that circle, other people can't use their magic on him. I, I think that's how that works. I, I've watched WandaVision, and, and I learned a thing or two. Uh, there is the alt mode shown, and it looks like it's pretty cool. Uh, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing this. He, he, looks, he looks like a raptor. And, uh, and I just noticed that the claws on the forearms are in a claw position, and I have not gotten the new Dinobot, but I noticed that the claws seem to be just kind of flat and hanging forward, and I, I it looks horrible. It, it just looks awful. Now, I still want to get that figure, but uh, and, and I will see if there's something that can actually be done with those, but it doesn't look like there can. So I'm just going to point out that somebody at Hasbro and Takara does know what raptor claws look like. We we have we have confirmation here that uh, that they know and, and they can use it. So uh, so whatever's going on with Dinobot, uh, we will find out. But we will hold them accountable. Uh, that that is. That is what we do. We we will hold them accountable. I, I I will have words. There will be words, and there will be a lot of them. So let's go ahead and open this guy up. And unfortunately, with blister packs like this, it's pretty hard to preserve the packaging. Uh, one thing that I could do is if I wanted to just cut through the side of the plastic and leave the blister stuck to the card. Uh, I'm going to attempt 
to pull the card off with as little ripping as possible. So I'm going to score it with my X-Acto blade, my, my terribly abused hobby knife here that is, uh, that has done far too much in its life and should probably have a new blade. But uh, I'm not cutting all the way through the cardboard. I'm just scoring around the edge of the glued flange of the blister. So there we go. And then, then that allows us to pull this up without it tearing out into the rest of the artwork. And then I get under there. And so at this point, I can just slice right along here. like that and now I'm going to get my blade underneath the blister and you can see that I'm just gonna trim on the other side so that we lose as little of the artwork as possible when we pull this away there we go so there and now I can pop that forward and pull this out so we have the figure and then we have some instructions let's see we have our little label card here that says kingdom and core class and has the UPC and then we have our instructions which uh, which that's very important and so I am going to make sure to read these carefully and uh, and then we also have the obligatory piece of paper which says in 30 or 40 different languages don't swallow it so we're going to get rid of that and we'll take a look at vertebrae and so he's got some plastic ties here I'm just going to slice through those with the hobby knife being careful not to slice into the figure or myself. And let's see if we can get that. There we go. And then we have the tail and we have the guy. And, uh, and I guess he can hold his tail as a weapon. So there we have him. And uh, he looks pretty cool in his robot mode. Now, uh, I, I'm, I'm just going to look here. I wonder if, uh, if the tail is such that it can stay on in his robot mode. Like, even if it's still a tail. And, and the reason why I'm looking for this is because I'm really not a big fan of when a Transformer that has a beast mode has to just pull off his tail and they say, okay, now it's a weapon. I, I would rather that the designers deal with it somewhat in some way, or even if they don't. Like for instance, you know, here here he's he's got the tail on in his robot mode and it's just a tail. He's just a robot that has a tail. And I, I, I would honestly rather do that and then give him the option of taking the tail off than just have it be like, well, you can't transform him unless he takes off his butt. And I'm just not a big fan of that. Uh, if they made it so that he can transform and leave it on, and then he's able to take it off when he wants to use it, I'm far more okay with that. But uh, And it seems like that's what we've got here. Now, I haven't transformed him yet, but, uh, but he's looking pretty good. I, uh, I like the Predacon logo, nicely detailed in the front. It's tiny. Here, let me get, get them really close so that we can try and get it into focus. Trying. Oh, boy, the camera does not want to do it. But there we go. So, yeah, uh, some really nice detail on the front. The face is awesome. Look at that. Look at all of that molded in detail. He really, for such a tiny figure, uh, he looks great. And that face is just, it's almost frightening. 
I, I love the depth. I love the, the look of, it's like he's got goggles, uh, you know, all the, the little pits and the textures and, and you can see the textures and the detail on the skull there that makes up his lower abdomen. Uh, his, his arms are, uh, are, are very nicely detailed and I don't see a whole lot of paint but you can see that there's even some paint detail on the arms here on the uh, on the forearms those little banding stripes there and uh, and then we've got different colors of plastic in the legs so you know it's all subtle uh, it looks like there's even a gradient look it's kind of like they've done an airbrush effect on the femurs there so, so that's really cool. Uh, he, he actually looks far better than I expected him to. Uh, you couldn't see most of this detail in the blister pack. Uh, his tail also has kind of a gradient of color, sort of an airbrush look to it. There, we'll get it in. So you can see it's much darker at the top and then it gets lighter towards the bottom. It is also molded out of a uh, rubbery material. And then we go around the back, and I love the spine. Uh, his back looks great. This is this is a really neat little figure that uh, that so far uh, I'm I'm really liking him. I haven't even done anything with him yet. Uh, we can look at the articulation. He's got a lot of points of articulation. He's got his head on a swivel. He's got his shoulder on a ball joint. He's got a ball joint at the elbow. He's got fully functional hips and uh, a hinge at the knee and then a ball joint at the ankle. So there's a lot of articulation here in the robot mode, which means that you can have a lot of fun with him and have him do a lot of horrible things. You know, have him lunge, have him attack, have him thrash. Uh, he is just a very, very playable figure. And what I'm noticing about at least uh, the one that I'm holding in my hands is that his joints are pretty tight. So he holds a pose very nicely. I am not getting any floppiness. And it's amazing because floppy joints can really detract heavily from a figure. It just makes a toy feel cheap and feel less uh, less substantial so when they have nice nice tight joints like these it, it really does help so uh, I'm gonna move back here and let's go ahead and uh, and transform him so there we go he is in focus here let's see uh, I I didn't really look at the instructions but but I, but I, I find it hard to imagine that I'm not going to be able to figure out how he transforms. So we've got a pa panel on the back here, and that'll allow us to flip the head around. And then we've got the chest, which has this panel here. So I'm going to guess that maybe this goes like that. Oh, yeah, that seems to fit in just like that. So there we go. And then I'm betting that the arms fold in towards the center and is that correct it looks like they do it certainly looks like they do so all right wait here yes yes they do so so that's good that is good uh do, i don't think that these that the arms really are supposed to do anything else so let's uh let's do the same with the other and we'll just leave the arms straight like that and then We'll bring the legs forward into a good... Is that a raptor? I, I, it looks like sort of... looks more like a bird, although I've seen Jurassic Park. I, Park, I know that d dinosaurs evolved from birds. Uh, oh, oh, before we bring the legs forward, let's bring these, these forearms forward. And then I'm just going to rotate these at the... Uh, at, the elbow so that they can kind of stay here tucked in in between the dino legs and I think that's it I think that's it and that is a cool little raptor skeleton thing um, 
or you know what I, I I'm not sure that he's a raptor he, he's got a beak so I don't I don't know that he's a raptor but he's something he is something and uh, and he looks awesome now he is not a fossilizer he is not one of the characters that you take apart and use them to add to other war for Cybertron characters but uh, I mean you could take off the tail we know that the tail is removable and you could have it held by another figure uh, I, I'm not sure that you wanna but you can do it and uh, of course you can always separate ball joints but uh, but I'm really loving the the posability of this guy uh, the the front arms here are just molded into this position uh, they they can you know because of the transform you can kind of pull them out to the side to give them a little bit more of a kind of lunge look but that's all you can do with them you can't you can't pivot them forward pivot them down they're always going to be in this position uh, it it's it's not a big deal uh, it would be great if they did move but they don't and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ding them too badly on that because he's still really really cool. Uh, let the head moves up and down. It does not twist side to side. It is not a ball joint. But you do have posability because again of the transform. You you have articulation here that you can have it bend down and and look up. Uh, and it seems that the beak is. Is on a hinge so the lower jaw here does open and close uh, it's rubbery though so it, it tends to want to bend more than it wants to flex but I can yeah I can definitely get it to open and that just looks awesome you know it, it looks like he's about to rip out the gullet of another unsuspecting robot if only I had another unsuspecting robot here for him to attack oh wait look it's Gen 1 Wheelie. Hey, Wheelie, watch out. There's a... <laughs> Wheelie says, stop biting my head. Oh, no, Wheelie's dead. Oh, so, yeah. Um, Poor Wheelie. He, he dies so often on my channel. I, I don't know why. But, uh, so, that... That is Vertebrae in his... Uh, in his alt mode and you can see here that uh, that it, it, it is pretty cool let me get him even closer so that we can really appreciate the detail that they've put into his uh, his sculpt because uh, it really does look good for such a small figure uh, he's got some great stuff going on here that that head is just phenomenal I love it it's it's terrifying it is detailed. The little de the the little nubs and the the texture is just fantastic. Uh, I would not want to re uh, to meet this creature in a dark alley somewhere. I would not want to re meet this creature in the wilderness. I don't want to meet this creature. Uh, I want to view this creature from the safety of my toy shelf but not in real life because it looks terrible and that's awesome and look at the way that they sculpted the the fingers on the claws I mean th that's actually really really nicely done the uh, the bone structure and, and the texture of the bones it really comes together excellently uh, the the feet are, are are well articulated and uh, and I suspect that he will have no problem standing up because he's got a nice wide stance and then we've got the tail piece which honestly I will most likely just leave the tail piece plugged in all the time and when he's in robot mode he'll have a tail and when he's in creature mode he'll have a tail uh, but you know if you want him to to swing his tail around like a like a weapon you certainly can it, it, it will be your toy and you can transform him the way that you want but uh, but I really like this guy I'm glad that I finally opened him uh, it, it's just a, you know I, I had a Della Duck to build so <laughs> so so that that's what I was working on but uh, 
but now that I have uh, a little bit of time to enjoy my toys, I'm really going to have a lot of fun with this guy, having him pounce on other creatures and other robots and thrash at them and bite at them and claw at them. It's, it's just a fantastic little toy to add to the kingdom line. And this is something where even though the kingdom line is inspired in many ways by the original Beast Wars line, the Beast Wars line didn't have anything quite like this. And this is where you can see that the designers are, are getting creative and coming up with some characters that I really hope will become uh, Transformers iconic characters and become staples of the franchise. As we have seen with new characters that get developed for each line, there's always some new standouts that capture people's imaginations. And uh, people like Vertebrae here... Uh, I, I see a lot of potential for, and uh, and it's a really cool toy. So, yeah, uh, I, I think I will definitely say that Vertebrake gets a, a huge recommend from me. Uh, I believe that it was like 10 bucks, and while I, I remember when a toy of this size was a lot less than 10 bucks but it's the world that we live in now. Things just keep getting more expensive. I don't like it, but that, that's just the way that the world works. I'm going to have to adjust my 40-some-year <coughs> brain that, that uh, things are not going to be the same price that they were 20 years ago or 30 years ago or more. Nonetheless... For the uh, the price of a uh, of a value meal at a fast food restaurant, you can you could just buy a pack of ramen and get Vertebrae instead. And when you're done, you'll you'll still have Vertebrae. I feel like that's a good value. So that is. I hope that you've enjoyed this unboxing and review of Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Vertebrake because he is kind of awesome and uh, and I, I really like him and if you get him then I think you will like him too. This is Clay Carlino telling you that if you like this video, please uh, click the thumbs up. It really helps us out. Also, uh, if you like our content, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. That way you know when we're doing more of these short circuits videos. Also, we do live streams pretty much every Friday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for the United States. And uh, it's, it's kind of a party atmosphere. We pick a topic. We show lots of toys. We have a, uh, a fantastic community of people that join in the live chat. And you are invited to participate. They're an awesome group of people. And we would love to have you. So please join us on Friday nights at 8 o'clock for the live stream and uh, join in the chat. It's lots of fun. And uh, subscribe to the channel and tell your friends that it's a great channel and, and all that good stuff. Thank you very much. This is Clay Carlino telling you to keep it retro. But, yeah. Oh, I so nailed it. Yes, definitely. Sort of nailed it. I think I nailed it. Did I nail it? Yeah, I nailed it. <laughs>